Next we have Sri Harsha. Let's see, Sri, are you around? Okay, uh, we can hear you. Hello, Sri. Uh, and uh, I think you have your slides up as well. Where are they? I can't see them now. Let me share the screen. Okay. Can you see them? They are da, 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 right here. Nice. Okay, you're going to tell us a little bit about what you guys are up to at Intuit, sure. one of my favorite companies. So take it away. I'll be back soon. Sounds good. Uh, Hi, everyone. I'm Sri. I currently work as a product manager at Intuit on the platform team. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about like real-time event processing for AI uh, ML. And then I'm going to share about uh, NumaFlow, which is the open source project that uh, we have developed and then open source for the community. So before we dive deep in, like a very high-level agenda is where uh, we'll just share a little bit about our platform team at Intuit. Uh, what do I mean by event processing and the event-driven architecture? Like what are the challenges that the ML teams that uh, face on a day-to-day -day basis? And then introduce about NumaFlow and then a quick demo. So Intuit is a, a global fintech company uh, which uh, has multiple product offerings, right from like TurboTax, like Credit Karma, QuickBooks, and Mailchimp. Uh, these are something like uh, people might be aware of in the US and even across the world, like especially Mailchimp and TurboTax and various other products. And you can see some of those numbers at the kind of scale that we ha operate in, either in terms of money movement or in terms of the uh, predictions that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's all of the platform is uh, developed and run on Kubernetes, and uh, we are. A, strong believer in open source. Uh, some of you folks, especially in the eco ML ecosystem, might be using like Argo Workflows and Kubeflow. Uh, Kubeflow is built on uh, Argo Workflows, if I'm not wrong. And Argo was incubated and open sourced by Intuit. And some of the learnings that we had from all of these projects uh, is how we have worked upon NumaFlow. And you'll learn about the platform in the next couple of slides. Uh, so moving on, like let's discuss quickly about like what do I mean by event processing or like event-driven architecture, right? Like in, in, in simple terms, it's you receive a lot of events and you just want to act on those events. In, that's in short about event processing or event driven architecture, where the events can be from like sensors or mouse clicks and all of those. And you want to, as a developer or as an uh, ML engineer or as a da data engineer, you want to analyze these events and then send it to your downstream. So in short, that's like a very high level uh, intro about like event driven architecture. But why do people tend to have like event driven architectures in generally? Uh, either to do real-time processing or like have some asynchronous workflows where let's say for example you want to do inference but sometimes inference can be uh time taking like how do i go about taking uh, you generally take an event driven architecture or asynchronous architecture there and it's kind of more uh, scalable and flexible because you can scale your components the way you would want to add more features or anything like that as you wish and then it's reliable because you can replace some of your events uh, if it's more of like a batch or real um, near real time use cases for real time you always want to process them real time so these are like one so a few reasons why on a day to day basis you would see like uh, event driven architectures across the board and let's see like some of those examples uh, where we see uh, event driven architectures right let's say for example in in the e-commerce side of things let's say you want to do real time recommendations for your users based on their mouse clicks or search history and all of that that's like more of a real time uh, event Event, uh, event driven uh, approach and events uh, let's say in the industrial use cases probably you are you receive a lot of data from iot devices and then you want to take actions based on the io uh, the data that you receive from iot devices and then the other could be is like dynamic pricing uh, either like for ride share apps or any of those like real time analytics that you do and then lastly fraud detection is another good example that uh, fintech products generally uh, focus upon but as a whole if you look at it right, right from e-commerce to fintech uh, from industrial and across the board you have a lot of event driven system that that has been the backbone for uh, like the modern tech that you'd see on a day-to-day -day basis but let's try to see like how does the architecture look like generally uh, for all of these event driven uh, systems like or event processing systems so the first is like you have multiple uh, event sources is what i would call them as uh, the event sources could be like where a simple sensor or your mouse clicks receiving the data through Kafka or Apache Pulsar, uh, SQS, Kinesis, and it could be multiple data streams where you receive all of these events from. And the next thing is like you would want to process these events, like probably do some kind of map, reduce, or even simple inference calls, uh, probably call an LLM model or whatever it may be. You want to do some kind of processing or do some kind of predictions on top of the data. And then finally, you send the events downstream to a DB or maybe another messaging bus like Kafka or whatever it may be. So in short, uh, you receive the events from sources, you do the processing, and then finally, you send the events to downstream uh, wherever you would want to do. 
But let's take a look at uh, some of the challenges that ML teams specifically face when you are uh, thinking about these use cases of like real-time event processing or connecting to multiple sources and all of that. So the first example or the first challenge that ML teams on a day-to-day -day basis uh, face is like, hey, how do I go about doing real-time event processing? I'm more of a Python guy, and if I want to do map, reduce, and all of that, uh, probably I should have to learn Java or data engineering frameworks, which is not their bread and butter on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, rather, they would want to focus on like, uh, can I use Python to do simply, simply uh, do the event processing real time and all of those use cases. So that is like one of the pain points that you would see on a day-to-day -day basis for ML teams. I don't want to really learn like the huge Java frameworks. Uh, can I just focus on Python, which is very easy, uh, focus on that itself. And the second is like complex integrations. You saw that uh, you have multiple sources where you can receive the data from, and then probably you'd want to write the data to. But as an ML engineer or as data scientist or anyone, you ideally want to focus on your event processing and then doing the um, uh, inference activities or any things like that, but rather not worry about how do I connect to these multiple sources and sings and all of that. That's another key pain point that you would see uh, if you talk to the teams. And lastly, scaling complex, uh, scaling complexities, right? Either uh, serving your models on uh, at scale, like as containers, that's one. And the second is uh, maintaining them, debugging them. Uh, the real time even uh, even processing infrastructure is complex. So if you if you talk to the yeah, platform teams that are running it at scale, they'll complain about hey, our costs are really high. We don't know how to scale it properly because uh, on Kubernetes, ideally, when you think of uh, auto scaling, it's mostly based on resource utilization, like CPU memory and things like that, but they don't really consider metrics like uh, Kafka consumer lag or the number of pending events that are upstream and things like those. So there are complex uh, complexities in terms of scaling in itself. As a package, if you look at it, it's like simple event processing challenges, connecting to multiple sources and things, and then lastly, like complexities. Like all of these kind of add up from different, different personas uh, within your ML teams to start with. So how did you go about solving that using uh, our platform called as uh, Numaflow? So Numaflow is a completely open source project that is developed by Intuit, and you can actually check it out. So let's dive deeper and then see what is Numaflow and how can you actually go about using it for real-time event processing or even simple like doing inference on like streaming data or predictions on streaming data and things like that. So so in the previous slide, I've mentioned about some of the challenges that the teams generally faces, uh, face, right? The first thing is you have to deal with a lot of the infrastructure. Like how do we go about abstracting that infrastructure for ML teams and just focus on uh, either data processing needs or probably just like the inference needs and things like that. Uh, the second is like decoupling the sinks and the sources from the uh, event processing in itself. And then lastly, making it scalable, reliable, and secure. So these are the three things that we have aimed to solve for using the platform. So let's dive deeper into like what does Numaflow look like and all of that. So let's I'll try to uh, explain the platform uh, using a simple example. Like in the world of like LLMs, and probably I'm just going back to the good old days where I'm just picking a sentiment analysis as an example and then try to explain uh, where so. So far, we have seen that, hey, you need an event stream to start with. So for even for sentiment analysis use case that I'm going to say that, hey, I just have a stream of events, probably Twitter or wherever it may be, some kind of a piece of a text that you are receiving it as an event stream through HTTP or Kafka or whatever it may be. And the second is you want to do some kind of prediction on that, like sentiment analysis uh, in this case. And then lastly, you would want to write these results to some, some kind of a sync. So what does Numaflow offer here? So if you look at this, uh, within Numaflow, all of your uh, entire processing is defined as a pipeline. So this is a pipeline here. And each of the pipeline basically consists of your vertices and uh, nothing but connected by different edges. Now, each vertex is uh, a simple container. And what does uh, Numaflow as a platform offer you, right? The first thing we said is, hey, we don't want to, uh, we don't want the teams to focus on uh, connecting to multiple sources. Like, how do we provide them out of the box? So, for example, like we have a lot of out of the box sources and things. Uh, you can use them and then quickly go about uh, doing your event processing. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use a hugging face model that is already available for sentiment analysis. So, I just receive events through HTTP source. I just do a sentiment analysis and then just pass it on. But as if you look at this primary uh, uh, in the next couple of slides, I sh I'd show you like where. As a ML team or like probably ML engineer or anyone, you would be focusing only on your prediction step uh, where you serve your model and not worry about your sources and things. Thus, that is the operational complexity that we alleviate for, for your uh, ML teams primarily. So let's actually 
take a look at the demo directly and then see how does it look like uh, a pipeline. So we have a completely baked in UI uh, that is part of the product in itself. So here is a sample pipeline that I have. I've sent already a few in events. So if you look at this one, you have an input source. And then I'm just doing a sentiment inference on that. And then finally writing the uh, events to some log. Uh, for, for the demo purposes, I've used log. But you can choose any sources that you like and any scenes that you like, and then just focus on writing that inference logic. And I'll show you how does that piece of code even look like in the next couple of slides. So. If you take a look at it, I've sent a bunch of events uh, already uh, where you can see that this is a great conference and then the sentiment is positive and then uh, the weather was a little bit gloomy on Monday here. So I just use that as you can see that it's a negative sentiment. But uh, in, in short, uh, you can see that you are receiving the events from your input source. You are doing the inference and just writing your events to a log. Uh, let's see how does that piece of code actually look like for the uh, inference step, right? So let me go to the slide here. So if you take a look at this particular piece of code on the left side, uh, it is nothing but you uh, all as a developer. Uh, this is a Python example, but we offer multiple SDKs right from Java, Go, even Rust is available. But if you look at this piece of code, all you all you need to do is you just need to implement this method where you are receiving a bunch of messages. You don't know where the source is from. All you can see is like, hey, I'm receiving a datum. And then I'm just, I'm just going to call the sentiment analysis model here and then uh, forward that message to the next step. So it's as simple as this one. You don't need to really worry about, hey, am I connecting to Kafka or HTTP source or probably like Pulsar, SQS, any of those. That's already taken care of by the platform. Uh, but as an uh, engineer, you'll just focus on like writing your processing logic. It could be a map function. It could be reduce. It could be anything that you'd want to do within this small piece of code here itself. Now, how does that pipeline spec look like? We saw that you have an input, you have an inference step, and then you have like a sync, right? So here is how a, you define a pipeline within NumaFlow. It's a simple YAML file where you have your vertices, like you are, you, you are just saying that source. I'm just using a HTTP source for this example. And then the sentiment inference is just a container uh, with that hugging face model, and which is nothing but this piece of code packaged as a container and available here. And then the third one, which we saw is like a log sync, where you can, I'm just sending out the in, uh, results to a log so that I can just quickly visualize them. So in short, if you look at it, we have alleviated like all of the challenges with connecting with multiple sources and syncs. And then as a, a ML team, you can just focusing, you can just focus on uh, writing your processing logic. If you're a data engineer, just focus on writing your uh, like map reduce or any kind of real time aggregations that you'd want to do. Or if you are just simple so trying to serve your models as an ML engineer, you can just package your container and just serve it. So we take care of the data movement from left to right, and then you focus on like what is most important for you. Now let's take a few more examples, like how are we using it into it? I'm, I'm just going to pick another example, which is like text summarization example, where I'm just sending a bunch of events, sending it to multiple like uh, vertices here, right? If you want to do some kind of A-B testing of models at the same time, and then trying to compare uh, and contrast your results. So these are three different, like one is a BART, BART model, like a Pegasus model, and then uh, I think this is another one, uh, which I've just picked up from the open source. All of those are hugging face itself, and then just writing the results to my log sync. So, in short, you can create as complex DAGs and graphs uh, that you would want to do using the pipeline spec in itself. Let's take even more a complex pipeline. This is like a real-time production pipeline that we are currently running it uh, into it, which is which does uh, anomaly detection. Uh, let's say you can see it here that uh, uh, we are receiving like close to 700 odd events per second, and then we are just doing a bit of pre-processing, then inference, and then a bit of post-processing, and then sending the data to different, different things right here. Uh, you can see like how complex this entire workflow you can build uh, use, using the entire uh, platform. And we are also using the same uh, pipeline to even trigger some of our training workflows. So we have just had a trainer vertex, which will just go trigger training workflows in the backend, but it's just like event-driven uh, training workflows. So we are just using one pipeline to do both uh, uh, predictions, anomaly, uh, anomaly detection real time, and also do the uh, training, uh, trigger the training workflows. But one thing I would want to touch upon is like, so far I have not mentioned about auto scaling. Like we said that, hey, one of the biggest challenges, uh, how do we go about auto scale? Uh, yeah, serving part of it, or even like even processing workloads, right? So if you take a look at it uh, here, 
uh, each of these are containers. So you can see that there are four pods that are uh, provisioned for like the input source, which is in this context, it's like a Kafka one. And then uh, you can see it's like two pods, two pods for pre-processing and three, pro three pods. So each of those steps, we understand uh, what is your current processing rate and what is the upstream set of events that you are receiving. And then we auto scale each of those individually so that there is no backlog of events and we are able to serve your request like a real time, real time. So uh, we do a lot of what we call is like a queue depth analysis where we understand from, from left to right uh, and right to left basically, to understand how how many uh, how is your yeah, downstream uh, able to process and then accordingly scale your upstream steps or even uh, scale your uh, downstream components. So in short, you can create uh, complex uh, DAGs like the way you wish to do any kind of processing in each of these steps. Uh, another thing which I want to touch is this is a very polyglot pipeline. Inference is actually written in Python, and some of the pre-processing steps are written in Java, and uh, even some of them are actually written in Go. Because we have a team of engineers which has software developers and like ML folks, so uh, each one prefer to their uh, prefer to use their own language. So it gives that flexibility to come together and then uh, do any kind of processing that you have uh, individually as a team, and you just use uh, whatever the language that you'd like. So this is like a real time uh, anomaly detection pipeline. Then we have like uh, high throughput pipelines which are processing like close to 15,000 TPS and even more, we can scale more. And the platform takes care of auto scaling and all of those pieces. So uh, just quickly to uh, see, uh, so as I said, like you have seen, uh, you can create complex pipelines, but if you want to read from multiple sources in one pipeline, you can do that, you can have uh, multiple, uh, conditional forwarding joins, if you'd want to do, you can do that too. So you can see that you have multiple UDFs. UDF is nothing but like a user defined function or the processing logic. And then you can do joins and have multiple joins if you wish to. Uh, you can do some kind of reprocessing if you want uh, for, some, for some of the events. And then finally, if you want to inject some kind of dynamic uh, uh, variables or input data that is required for your UDFs, you can do that too. Uh, so. In short, like whatever I've shared so far, let's try. Let me try to summarize, right? Like the first is it's a completely Kubernetes native event processing platform uh, with fully stream processing uh, semantics in any language that you'd like. Uh, it can run. It's so lightweight that uh, it can run even on like edge devices. I'll share some of those examples too, uh, like how the community is actually using. And then it's completely a language agnostic framework where you have uh, SDKs available for in Java, Python, Golang, and Rust. And uh, we have we've provided like a lot of out of the box source and things. But if you want to uh, implement your own source, like we have seen from the community where they want to uh, implement uh, custom sources for some uh, ZMQ and uh, RabbitMQ and like whatnot, they were able to do it because we provide all of the SDKs and the framework to create your own custom source and things and write the functions the, the way it is. And the third is like scalable and cost efficient. Right? You have seen that scalability where we can scale down to zero to X uh, based upon the throughput that we are receiving and the processing rate that you as a function can do. And it's uh, cost efficient, uh, as I said, like we completely deploy it on edge devices too. Uh, that is something that we have observed in the community. So let me go to show you some of those examples. Like these are some of the companies that are using it for different, different kinds of use cases, not just like ML, even for data processing or real time event processing. So at Intuit, we use it for uh, anomaly detection and a uh, bunch of other uh, uh, event processing use cases. Like uh, we know that Lockheed uses it for like some kind of uh, IoT data processing. Uh, B-Cube, they use it for like a radio frequency signal uh, processing and Seeker use it. Seeker and Velega, they use it for like uh, ML use cases, fraud detection use cases. But in short, uh, if you look at it, it's uh, as a platform, we support different, different use cases, primarily for real time event processing, either you are a data engineer or a software developer or even ML engineer. If you want to serve your models or do, do data processing, you will you can do it because as a platform, we provide all of the SDKs uh, in your favorite languages that you can actually use and not worry about uh, uh, deploying complex data engineering platforms, uh, real-time event processing platforms, and then uh, having that huge learning curve of uh, learning all those concepts and all of that. I think that is where we really shine, and that is what really resonates with the community. So uh, if you want to be part of the community, uh, so you can quickly scan this QR code. You can find the GitHub repository. 
and do star us if, uh, if you really uh, love the project so that you can get updates and all of that. But if you want to contribute or use, uh, feel free to drop me a note. Uh, more than happy to help you out. But uh, yeah, in short, that's like uh, uh, Numaflow is the uh, real time event processing platform that we have developed and open source that uh, into it. So with that, let me stop sharing and any questions. Riyarsha, thank you very much. This is fascinating. It looks beautiful too. It looks quite mature already. So very nice. How long have, has this been um, in production and how long have people outside of Intuit been using it? I'd say uh, we have gone, we have done a 1.0 uh, last KubeCon. Uh, it's been more than a year that uh, we have been using it at production at scale. And there are a lot many companies. I've just only shared some of the examples, but if you talk to the users who are on the community, uh, the wide variety of use cases that they actually use uh, mm -hmm. is uh, mind boggling, to be honest. They use it for audio processing, radio frequency signals. These are some of the use cases that we never like thought of, but uh, it's really resonating with like the community and that's what they actually use it for. Very cool. We got a couple of questions here. Um, Onkar is asking, how does NumaFlow ensure scalability and performance in real-time sentiment analysis pipelines? So uh, the way we actually do uh, auto scaling uh, is based upon a couple of things. One is we understand how many events are pending from your uh, upstream, basically Kafka or any source, whatever it may be. We understand those metrics. And then the second is like we try to understand at what rate can you process? Let's say, are you able to process like three events per second or probably four events per second? So we based on uh, looking at all of your upstream, downstream and your current processing rate in itself, we auto scale individual components such that there is no lag uh, as such. Let's say, for example, sometimes there are use cases where maybe a sync can be completely down, a database is completely down, and you cannot write the events. So we scale the entire pipeline back to zero if need be, or you can also write it to a fallback sync if you can provision for that. So we have all of that flexibility that uh, we provide where you can package, uh, yeah, you can do any kind of processing and then also package your models for uh, inference on like streaming data. We have another question here from Rohan. Uh, does it support zero downtime DAG update? Uh, yes, that is something that we are actually currently working on where we want to uh, be able to provide you the flexibility to do uh, no downtime upgrades. Uh, let's say you change your container. Like, How do we make sure that we are not stopping your processing altogether rather uh, dynamically be able to solve for it. That should be available very soon. That there's a PR out for it. Uh, I think it should be available soon for the no downtime updates. Sriharsha, thank you very much. If folks have more questions, maybe you can join us for the chat.